Hey, I'm Joel. In the past, I did an overview video of Roland Xenology Pro Software Synth, but I want to go into a little bit more basis of sound design uh, in Xenology Pro. So that is this video. We're going to focus on the amp envelope and sort of sculpting your sound for this video. So we've got Roland Xenology Pro. We're just going to get initial tone. So click the browser here, make sure all is selected on the left, all is selected on the right, and hit initial tone. So by default, you get this nice little piano sound. We're just going to work with some basic waveforms here. So we're going to uh, click VA, which is virtual analog, and then we're going to have the saw wave here. As I said, we're going to work with the amp envelope. So you, if you have partial selected up here, it's going to show everything for that partial. It's all highlighted. But if we just click amp slash EQ, it's going to bring up the amp envelope for all of the four partials showing together here. So you can see what they're all doing at the same time. This is the amp envelope here. So the way Roland Xenology Pro organizes their amp envelope is they've got these five nodes here that you can move around, change the timing of the amount and shape the sound. Uh, it's not specifically attack, decay, sustain, release, which you may be used to. Uh, attack is how quickly it takes for a note to go from the initial starting point to its full volume. Decay is how long it takes to reach the sustain level. So when you hold the note on, whatever the sustain level is set to, after it goes through the attack curve and the delay curve, it will end up on the level that sustain is set to until you release the note. And then when you release the note, the release setting comes into play and it's how long it takes for the sound to reach zero again after the key is released. So by default, Xenology just uses T1, T2, T3, and then that's level three, and then T4. So the T1 is the attack, T2 is the decay, T3 is the sustain, um, and T4 is the release. But it's not labeled that way. You can actually go into Pro Edit here, and under Common, if we scroll down, and it's got partial, partial one ADSR switch, so attack, decay, sustain, release. So by default, it's off. So it's going to look like that with those levels there. But if we go back into Pro Edit and hit on for partial one, then we go back to Visual Edit, we can see that T1 is labeled attack, T3 is labeled decay, uh, and then L3 is the sustain. Or if we look out here, that's also that's the sustain there. And then T4 is the release. So if you prefer to work with just ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release, that's the way to do it. But having that switched off does give you an extra node to work with so you can shape your sound a little bit more so you can get like a pseudo curve going on here in the decay, uh, which is quite handy actually. So whichever way you prefer to work in, either just the default that Xenology Pro is or with the attack, decay, sustain, release specifically. So let's just give a few examples here. So attack uh, by default. Let's turn that release down. I shall turn the release off. So as soon as we hit the note, uh, it starts immediately with the short attack. And then as soon as we release the note, it will just immediately stop. So with the attack or the first note here, by default, you, as soon as the key hits, it will start the note. But if we bring this out, it's going to take a short time to reach full volume. Or we could have that really, really stretched out. It's going to take a little while. Still going. I think you get the idea. So you can you can use some really long attacks, and if you have them um, lay it up with multiple partials here, you can have. One, sl one partial slowly creep in as the other one slowly creeps out, for example. So if I turn partial two on here, I'm also gonna choose, I'll choose a square wave for some contrast and we'll go back into the amp envelope here. And on the uh, second one here, we're gonna have a really slow decay. And on the first partial, we're gonna have a really slow attack. So what's gonna happen is when I hit the note, partial two is gonna start at full volume and then slowly fade out. And then partial one is gonna start at no volume and slowly fade in. as you can hear. So I'm just going to turn partial two off here, go back to partial one. So that's the attack, how quickly it takes for a note once the key is pressed to reach full volume, as long as the key is held. 
and then decay or uh, by default in the Xenology Pro here we've got these two knobs to play around with here so like I said we can get like a little pseudo curve of how quickly the note reaches its sustain volume keeping that in mind here uh, We'll set this at halfway, so the sustain volume is going to be half of full. So it's going to start at full volume, then it's going to take a short time to reach the sustain volume. And you can hear it's holding there, about half volume. If we turn that up a little bit. So the beautiful thing about having these two knobs here, as opposed to going in here and switching the attack to case sustain release switch on, is you can't really set it at... You can't have a maximum amount that will that you'll hear while the key is heard before the decay so you've only got the immediate decay so you can't have it sustain the note at full volume for any period of time if you've got a decay that's less than the full volume but let's just turn that off again I hope that makes sense so with if we have the ADSR switch turned off here we have this extra node so we can have the note play at full volume for a short period of time and then decay and then then sustain at the sustain level here so listening to that I'm going to turn that uh, sustain up a little bit so you can hear it's holding on and then it drops and then it holds on to the next um, sustain level Cool, and then the last option you have is release here or T4. So when I hold the note, it's going to stay at the sustain volume after going through attack and decay, but in this example, there is no attack or decay on it. But then when I release the note, it's going to take a predetermined amount of time to reach zero volume. So if we play it now with no release, as soon as I release the key, the note will stop. But if we bring the release out, has that little tail and if we bring the release right out I'm just going to tap the note here so you can see that can take quite a while to release there so that's nice if you get to the right spot you can see you get some really fun little pretty sort of sounds there and that's just using a basic saw wave here um, you can do a whole lot of different stuff with different uh, partials layered with different sounds. But yeah, that's pretty much the basis of um, the amp envelope itself. And then in there, you have the options to pan left, right. It's going to turn that release down. So left, right. So now we have velocity sensitivity here, V-sense. Uh, so that means uh, that depending on how hard we hit a key, it's going to apply the volume to it. By changing the velocity sensitivity, which defaults to 50 in the positive scale, by the way, 100 being max and 0 being neutral. So what I've done is I've just taken a MIDI clip here and I've, I've increased the velocity on the notes as the notes go along. So just sequential notes, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc, etc. And as the velocity is increasing, the amplitude or the volume of the note is also increasing. So if we go back into Xenology Pro, have the MIDI clip open down the bottom there, um, with velocity sensitivity at 50, which is default, as these notes play, it's going to get increasingly louder. And then that um, this final note will be almost full volume here, 120 out of 127. So let's listen to that. If we bring this velocity sensitive amount to zero, this velocity won't come into effect at all. It's just going to play at full volume. And then if we maximize the velocity sensitivity, that means it's really sensitive. So we're not going to hear most of these first notes and it's only really going to start bringing the volume in around here somewhere. So unless you're really a prolific piano or keyboard player and you really want different contrast in the velocities, I think you should just leave it at about 50. That's pretty good. So velocity will come into effect, um, but won't. But you'll still be able to hear these low, these low velocity notes. Or if you just want it stable and you just want the same volume for every note, just hit zero there. It doesn't matter what velocity it's entered in that, it's going to play at that full volume. So then we have the LFOs. So LFO1 and LFO2, we can send, uh, each partial has its own LFO, has two LFOs in each. So we can send the amplitude or the volume or the level of the synth, which can be controlled independently here, can be sent to the different LFOs. 
So I'll do another video on LFO itself, but if I send the amplitude to LFO1, it's going to take LFO1 and it's going to change the volume according to how the LFO is set. And then I'll do another video specifically on LFOs, but you can change the rate time, delay time, fade time, bunch of cool stuff. And of course, in the amp envelope here, you have a really basic EQ with a low cut, a midpoint, and a high cut. So we don't have much control over the low and high cut, but the mid cut here, we do have a Q or a resonance control. So you can see what we can do there. Uh, we can boost the lows, cut the mids, boost the highs. Uh, that's another thing I noticed with Xenology too. As you're changing, if you're holding a note, uh, if you're changing some of the parameters, it doesn't give you a real-time update until you release the key and then start again. So yeah, it, the EQ can be controlled independently by turning it on or off in each partial. And that is the AMP envelope. Thanks for watching.